Hello everyone, my name is Mecha and you're watching Can You Beat Fire Emblem 7 Lin Hard Mode Without Attacking? Last time I attempted Hector Hard Mode and, spoiler alert in case you haven't watched it yet, proof that it is possible to beat. I did run into a few problems and had to rely on glitches in order to do full recruitments, but with a bit of hindsight it was much easier to beat the second time around. Yeah that's right, I actually went back to an early save and beat it without attacking. I have a problem. And by I, I once again mean my editor Hoshi the Hero. Since this is my third time going over this, here is a brief explanation of the rules. I cannot confirm the attack command against the red unit, meaning attacking walls and whatnot is A-OK. -okay. I'm also going to recruit every unit and keep them alive while doing so. But that aside, you might be wondering, why would I bother attempting Lin mode in the first place? For those of you who don't know, Fire Emblem 7 has three modes. Because all Americans know is shoot day gun, eat burger, customary system, be racist, play football, and freedom. Intelligence systems included a tutorial for their first global release, Lin Mode. You start out on Lin Mode, then you move on to Elliwood Mode to experience the main story, and after that you unlock Hector Mode, the final challenge of the game. It's just a repeat of Elliwood Mode with slight changes, so whether or not you can beat Lin Mode without attacking is the final question I have for this game. Keep in mind that while, yes, Lin Mode is the easiest, that doesn't mean it will be the easiest to complete without attacking. The developers give you very few tools to work with, expecting you to make full use of all of them. Nobody ever plays Lin Mode, so I'm not entirely sure what obstacles await me. So let's put this challenge to the test and see if it's possible to beat FE7 Lin Hard Mode without attacking. First chapter is extremely simple, it's just a wide open plane with two enemies. Shut the hell up. Bitch. There is some terrain a bit out of the way if you want to dodge the very first guy more reliably, but even if you do get hit, you can just use a vulnerary, which these challenges have given me a much higher appreciation for. Bosses never move in Lin mode, so I just wait around and heal whenever necessary. Well, here's my first level up. Now we get two more units, Scent and Kane. Sane only has a lance to start out with on this map, populated by exclusively axe wielders, so I trade Lin's only weapon over to him. Lin is not as bad in this mode compared to Hector Hard mode, but the Cavaliers will still make better use of the experience in the long run. So one Cavalier softens and the other Cavalier kills. Their first few level ups are very important, because Kent needs one point of speed to start doubling and Sane needs two. If Sane manages to reach that benchmark first, he will be unstoppable, so I try to focus a bit more on him. Once the boss is on its left, a good opportunity to grind support ranks presents itself, but unfortunately you cannot get supports in Lin mode, so the boss goes bye bye and I go to the next chapter. I start out by moving the calves up and leaving Lin behind. I make sure Sane is the one to pull the first enemy in so he can reach level 3. Hell yeah! Sane can break the wall with a lance in two hits, so that's his job. Kent helps him out by trading his weapons around and then gets out of the way once the job is done. Now you can see why Sane, plus 2 speed level ups, is Punich incarnate, and this is just the beginning. Sane takes on the boss, while Kent handles the last enemy. I'm not gonna give up on him just yet. Uh, just kidding, Sane gets the last kill too. Lin receives the Manikati, which is the only weapon she'll need for this entire playthrough. Even if I planned on taking the save file to Hector Hardboat, it gets repaired, and she would probably get benched anyway. Oh no, there's an archer on a route map, and none of my units can counter at 2 range. Thankfully, we get a unit who can if we visit this village. So Lin recruits Will, while the other three units utilize their movement status around the archer. Will handles him just fine, so it's really no big deal. Florina will be in range of another archer, but she can survive one attack. Effective damage in this game is calculated like so, but the multiplier is actually 3 in the Japanese version. Florina would survive regardless, but she cannot stick around here. However, I still want to keep the other archers surrounded, so I do a few epic rescue strats to get her out of the danger zone. Things are going well so far, but this village containing 2000 gold is gonna get sacked, and I'm not about to let that happen. Florina heals up, baits the brigands, and repeats the process. According to my calculations, this would also work out in a Japanese version. Meanwhile, the remaining archer is still being a nuisance, so Will takes the forest to deal with him. He does his job, Florina does her job, and then Sane goes beast mode on the remaining enemies. There's also an armory here, where we can put our newly acquired gold to good use, so I buy an iron sword, since Sane has been going a little too ham. Surprisingly, I actually give the boss kill to Kent, hoping that he will level speed. Bruh. We're on a defend map now, and the first enemy phase plays out about how you would expect it. Sane kills everything that dares to even look at him, and Will fulfills his one and only purpose as an archer. Lin recruits Dorcas, and the next enemy phase plays out similarly. 
This time though, Dorcas uses a hand axe to pull an archer away from the boss and Florina gets ready for some shenanigans. The aforementioned shenanigans being two rounding some mercenary reinforcements with an iron lance. But Dorcas misses his second counterattack on the archer so now things are a little bit dicey. Lynn has to take Florina's place for now while she heals herself up. I guess she'll get a chance later. Kent intentionally breaks the left wall so he can get the experience on the other side. Unfortunately, he doesn't manage to impress, so I guess that XP goes to Lin. Florina handles the right, Sane handles the bottom, and they end the chapter with an impressive kill-death ratio. Ugh, green units. They join pretty much immediately though, so I guess they're not too bad. This puts Lin in range of an archer, but Florina fixes that non-issue with a rescue. Sarah moves away from the archer while the units with two range move towards him, and the calves go up to deal with the one range enemies. Sarah can heal as long as two range gang continues to retreat, so that's what I do, even if it's not entirely necessary. Florina escorts Lin over to the boss to put the herd on him, and the rest of the chapter is pretty self-explanatory. There is one other thing worth mentioning, this armory. I buy three javelins for Florina, Kent and Sane, which will be enough one two range to get me through the rest of this mode. But I had to move Florina in range of the archer guarding the armory since I forgot to make room in Sane's inventory first. It's no big deal though, cause by the time Lin kills the boss, Florina can get the two of them the heck out of there. And now, armed with a javelin, Sane can show you his true power. I said Sane can show you his true power. Damn, well, I guess now half the team is basically useless. Florina gets a door key. Bam. Lin recruits Matthew. Bam. Matthew opens the door. Bam. Wrath stands on the space. Bam. Everyone else moves back. Bam. Matthew gets an angelic robe from a chest which will go to, well, who else but Sane. Florina handles the bottom of the map, Sane handles the top, and everyone else moves towards the middle. Matthew then gets an armor slayer from another chest, and Florina wraps up the business he has in the bottom. Now I have an armor knight and an archer to deal with. I can handle this. I surround the knight with Sane and Kent, who is equipped with an armor slayer, and I surround the archer with whoever else is available. Things get scary for Kent, but then I realize he doesn't even need to be here to handle the archer since the boss doesn't move. So Sane does his thing, but Lin ends up being the one to kill the boss. At least she's not doing too bad in the stat department. This chapter is why I trained Florina. We have access to the battle preps now, which is a welcome change for sure. We also get a dancer. I can't wait to pull off some big brain strats with him. Wow. The first enemy can be surrounded by all of my 1-2 range units, but Florina's gonna head straight down to start clearing the enemies around the boss. Sane of course moves up as far as possible. The first shaman backs himself into a corner, the perfect prey for Kent to work on that pathetic speed stat of his. So yeah, this chapter's pretty slow. Saint slowly makes his way past the choke point while Florina takes on multiple enemies from the comfort of a fort. Nils does basically nothing, but the good news is that Kent finally leveled up speed. Too little too late, I think. Sane obtains a pure water, but we have a Florina, so I doubt we'll get much use out of it. As she finishes off the remaining enemies, the calves rescue chain Lin to seize. Florina handles the boss in the meantime until her health reaches critical levels and then Sane does some work, but I let Florina deal the final blow for some reason. Now, I have the option to do a guide in chapter. I can already imagine what it'll be like, but I want to know for sure. And besides, who am I to turn down some free Sane level ups? I start out by baiting as many enemies as possible. Then I have Kent and Florina break the wall so Matthew can open a chest and find a hammer. Hmm, I wonder if I can make use of this somehow. Sane pushes up and Lin handles whoever is lucky enough to not be in his path. The thief that would have stolen the hammer bails, so there's no rush there. Florina gets some kills, and with the help of Nils, traverses the entire map to get some more kills. Florina and Sane make their way to the boss, and Sane reaches level 10. Hmm, I wonder if me bringing this up is important in some way or another. Matthew leaves for this chapter, but nobody cared about him anyway. There is a ballista in the middle of this map, potentially posing a problem for Florina, especially in the Japanese version, but with a dance, I can get her over to the village to deal with the mages easy peasy. So Florina does that, all the cavalry units head down, and everyone else stays back. Then I realize that Sane is all I need, so the other cavalry units stay in the back as well. This is really starting to look like the adventures of Sane and Florina, huh? I do want Wrath and Kent down here to surround the archer at least, so they do that, while Sane continues to solo an entire army. Once the ballista is out of ammo, I decide that maybe Kent could give the front lines a try instead. Oh, never mind that. Well, Wrath takes out the archer and Sane kills everything else. Next. This chapter took me by surprise, it's actually not a complete ruffle stump. Oh shit, did you seriously just make me say that? Anyway, it looks like there's basically no enemies on this map, but in a second we're gonna see fog of war and several waves of reinforcements. Wallace joins with a knight crest requesting to be promoted to general, but we're gonna ignore that for now. Sane goes balls deep with the aid of a dance, and then Nils gets rescued from danger. Kent chokes the bridge, but now reinforcements are coming in. We need a setup to reliably deal with this. 
Well, Thornak can handle the top, and Wallace and another unit can handle the bottom, and Matthew can handle the middle. This position is perfect for him since there's a spot right behind him that enemies cannot reach. This means Sarah can heal him, while the other units take little to no damage, so no one is really in danger. But there is something else really important that happens in this chapter. After one more level up from Sane, I use Wallace's Night Crest to promote him. That's what I'm talking about. I equip him with an Iron Axe and a Hand Axe and try to raise his Axe Rack as much as possible while I'm in this chapter. This map actually did take a little bit of trial and error, but once I found this setup, it was golden. So I basically just wait until all the reinforcements have been dealt with, then move in with Sane and Lin. Unfortunately, Sane doesn't reach D rank axis before ending the chapter, but he's still looking damn fresh with those promoted stats. This is it, our final battle. The last chapter ramped up the difficulty somewhat, so who knows what this one has in store for us. By the look of things, we might be in for a bit of a challenge. This is our chance to use every tool in our arsenal. Let's do this. Wait. What are you doing? Why do you only have 5 units? This is supposed to be the epic final battle and you're ruining it. Oh, oh I see, you're putting Florian in range of an archer to build tension. Or not. Well, Sane can't use hammers, so surely the boss will still pose a significant challenge. Oh no, <laughs> please stop, you're making this challenge video look like a joke. Well, at least the actual final showdown is kinda hype. I guess I can at least bother explaining what's going on with the rest of the map. Wallace takes zero damage, so he just protects Nils at the spawn. There is some precipitation that falls down from the sky, you know, as it does, but it makes no difference to me since Lundgren is almost dead by the time Florina gets then over the seas. Well, it may be a bit anticlimactic, but that's how you beat Lin mode without attacking. See what a little bit of planning and foresight can do for this challenge? You can buy hammers or heavy spears on this map, and Wallace could use them if you promoted him instead, maybe get an energy ring along the way, even just do the map normally, but Sane is epic, so yeah, that's it. Well, that was even easier than expected, but hey, I had to go back and finish the job. And actually, this gave me some pretty good ideas to improve my Hector Hard Mode run. Having a second Marcus in the early game would be busted for sure, but what about using the opportunity to train Lin? I thought the Lloyd version of Chapter 24 was all but guaranteed since it requires training Elwood and Lin, but if you get the Linus version, that would mean you wouldn't need to use the enemy control glitch at all for full recruitment. Maybe. In that case, Battle Before Dawn would be the biggest obstacle to a glitchless run. Now don't worry, I'm not gonna do it. Probably, but it's fun to think about. I feel satisfied with this conclusion, but if anyone else wants to attempt a glitchless full recruitment no attack run, be my guest. For me, I think it's time to put a close to this chapter of my life and maybe try to remember what it feels like to play Fire Emblem game with attacking. Now, while this was only a bit of torture for Hoshi, it was torture nonetheless, so I think I owe it to him to thank the people who made this torture possible. The people on your screen right now are my A tier patrons, who are kind enough to set aside a big chunk of money for me every month so I can keep putting out videos for free. And a super big thank you to my S tier patrons for paying me enough to also let me butcher their names here. Crimson Blader, Ice Lake, Moo, Skyler, Beiku, Boots42, Command List, Daniel, Nick Hill, P. Vladias, Scott Mitchell, Blue Caterade, Ben Dion, Schmeep, Ark Holt, D. Giant Corks Crew, Zelda, and Carasso. You all are amazing. Last but not least, thanks to Hoshi for giving up his sanity, and thanks to you for watching.